Good morning. The time is 9.07. Currently another very mild start here in central Wisconsin. At our studios on the corner of Washington Street and North 3rd Street. Currently mostly cloudy skies and 40 degrees. I'm Chad Holmes. It is the Chad Holmes Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Online at bullfallsradio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Again, as I said, very mild start here in central Wisconsin. What can we expect for the weekend? Well, to find out, we're joined from Weatherology by our meteorologist. I'm assuming it's Jennifer Vucicki. Is it you, Jennifer? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I had a little cr- trouble connecting there, and I picked up the phone while I was on the air, so I wanted to make sure it was you. But, uh, again, a very mild start here in central Wisconsin. We're just not used to it at this point in December, 40 degrees right now. And it, it looks like it's going to be another very warm day as more of the snow that is on the ground goes away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, it's a very mild one. Today, highs getting into the upper 40s here. We normally should be right around about the low 30s, so quite a bit above average for this time of the year. And that warm front pushes through the area today. Tonight, uh, we'll see cloudy skies for the day as well. A little bit on the breezy side with the passing of that system. Tonight, a slight chance for rain, possibly mixing with some snow in the overnight hours. Mostly cloudy skies. Overnight lows around about 33. Cooling down by about 10 degrees actually here for your Saturday as a cold front comes in. A slight chance for rain and snow mixing for the day with cloudy skies. High around 38 degrees tomorrow. A dry end to the weekend here on Sunday, and it looks like even cooler as well. More of an average day, though. Partial sunshine on Sunday, high 30. 33 degrees here on Monday. We'll start off the work week with some sunshine here. And then on Tuesday, pretty similar day. Mostly sunny, high around about 30. Still kind of quiet. I guess we'll just have to keep on waiting for that first big one because you know it's coming eventually. But uh, right now, uh, again, just these above average temperatures temperatures and just not a lot of precipitation i mean that as you said a little bit of a slight chance but really nothing in the foreseeable future that says uh keep an eyes out and get those shovels out yeah definitely nothing shovel worthy but like you said just that slight chance coming in tomorrow so things might be a little on the slick side but nothing uh, really accumulating expected okay well thanks again for the information have yourself a, a great weekend and we'll catch you again on monday thanks so much you too that is our meteorologist, Jennifer Fuchiski, joining us from weatherology.com. Right now in Wausau, fog and a little bit of mist out there. I don't see it looking out the window, but apparently that's what the weather service says. I'll say just mostly cloudy skies. Temperature stands at 40 degrees. The winds are out of the east at 5 miles per hour. The wind chill is 36. Dew point of 37. Relative humidity of 89%. The barometer, 29.48 inches and a visibility of five miles. It is Friday morning, Friday morning, 9.09. Chad Holmes with you coming up a little bit later on in the hour at 9.34. We will be talking to a really terrific uh, young man, a junior at Wassa East High School, uh, Jesse Napgesic. He is the leading scorer right now for the Wassa East High School boys basketball team. They are 5-0 and to start off the campaign, and we'll find out what's led to that start and uh, talk about a very significant game for the Lumberjacks tonight as they play host to the uh, D.C. Everest Evergreens. That's coming up at 9.34. But also want to say good morning again to uh, Ian Welsh, my in-studio producer. Ian, good morning. Good morning, Chad. Are you somebody that ever plays the uh, the lottery? Do you buy lottery tickets? Uh, sometimes if I have a little extra money. If you have some money to burn, right? I do, <laughs> because, yeah. Because I never the, won anything. I know, no. exactly right. It's like I, I, I very, very rarely buy lottery tickets. Usually the only time I've done it is uh, when you have a bigger office, sometimes they'll say, mm-hmm. okay, we're all going to chip in and we're going to buy some of these lottery tickets because we have this chance to win a billion dollars or whatever it may be. <laughs> and the reason that I do it is because can you imagine if you're in an office and everybody in the office buys a lottery ticket and then they win 
and you're the only one that doesn't win part of the big billion dollar oh, package. Would suck. <laughs> Everybody would be coming to work, getting ready to quit and celebrating. But uh, the reason I bring it up because uh, the Powerball is starting to go up again. And every time it goes up, we kind of talk about it and the lines get a little bit longer to buy the tickets. And Powerball has not had a winner since October the 11th. So we're coming up on... Really? Yeah, so we're coming up on two months without a winner. So the Powerball jackpot right now has risen to $468 million for Saturday Night's Drawing. So you may want to wow. think about, you know, getting a ticket or two, and then you can come and, you know, become my boss and, uh, <laughs> you know, buy, buy, buy the radio station and say, I'm going to take over. But uh, $468 million bucks for Tomorrow Night's Drawing. That's uh, a lot of things I could do with that yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> and buy, buying a radio station probably is not number one on the list. <laughs> But uh, tonight, there is a Mega Millions jackpot, and that's also getting way up there. If you're someone who plays Mega Millions, it's uh, right now just under $400 million. So could you imagine, hey, let's 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 say, you know, okay. an amazing occurrence happens. You, you buy tickets for both of them, and you win tonight, and then you win tomorrow. What do you, what do you think people would say if somebody, <laughs> by some incredible confluence... <laughs> So, I mean, you know the odds of winning are just there. I mean, you're yeah. not nobody. Everybody say nobody wins. Well, somebody always wins, but the odds of us, either one of us winning, are just you know, in just infinite. I mean, just so small. I would be so much fun to see the, the 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 incredible outrage from some people saying there must be a fix if one person won tonight and tomorrow. That would just be it would be that would be insane. It would be insane. <laughs> also. I know that I spend too much time on my phone. I think you spend too much time on your phone because I notice you on your phone. Yeah. So you got to stop do. doing that when you're, especially when you're working. I mean, gee whiz. I know that you know maybe sometimes I'm not as interesting as I need to be, but gee whiz. But but I saw a uh, a story here that in this I put in the obvious file because there are some things that are just obvious, mm -hmm. and it's people who ignore their phones are happier. They're actually happier because they're not on their phone all the time. Oh. A study found that people who are constantly glued to their phones are unhappier than those who don't. Those who constantly check their phones suffer from higher anxiety levels. And that makes sense because why do you search on your phone? Because you're looking for something. When you don't find it, you're going to get anxious. If you're looking for a message from somebody, you're going to get anxious. If you're looking for likes on Facebook and you're not getting them, you're going to get anxious. So so stay that, off the phone, people. That actually makes a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense. I think, uh, again, and something that, as, uh, that, that a lot of men worry about as well is mm -hmm. losing one's hair. People want to keep their hair as long as possible. And what do you think men would do to fight hair loss? Well, <laughs> shave every day would be my guess. That's but I mean, if I'm talking about, you know, you if you can buy your way out of it, and there's a survey out there oh, no. of hair loss sufferers. These are people who are losing their hair. And the average amount that people who are losing their hair would shell out on medications is now up to $52,000. People would spend $52,000 for medications to save your hair. Well, come on, Patrick Stewart made a great career without any hair. He did. <laughs> Telly Savalas was Kojak, the coolest guy around. He had no hair. Uh -huh. But the the survey of Baldies, <laughs> that's not very <laughs> nice. Survey of Baldies found that they would often give up their life savings. Oh, come on. Come on. Really that much, people? Okay. <laughs> they said, okay, they had put on three things that they would give up. <laughs> One, their life savings. Two, their weekends. And number three, even having sex, if they oh, could, if, come on. <laughs> if they could grow a full head of hair, <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable is right. So again, I just I came across uh, some of those interesting little uh, news stories, and this one I got one more because okay. this one, <laughs> this person would not have had the problem if they were on the radio instead of TV, but there was a. BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation news mm -hmm. presenter, has apologized for giving the middle finger on a live broadcast. Oh, no. She was caught on camera giving the middle finger during a live broadcast. 
Miriam Moshiri claims that the gesture was meant as a private joke for a colleague who was not intended for viewers. She quickly realized she was on live television, pulled down her hand, and continued with the news. See, that's why you <laughs> always have to watch yourself on television because you never know when you're on the air and when you're not. There's See? a rule for radio as well. When I'm doing What's a that? broadcast, the rule is always assume that the mic is live. Yeah. Do not assume that the mic is dead because if you do that, you may say something that you'll come to regret. And I think the same thing for news people. If there's a camera in front of you, assume you're on the air. And uh, Moshiri took to Twitter to apologize to viewers, explaining that she was pretending to count down as the director was counting her down from 10 to 0. When they reached 1, she turned her finger around as a joke, not realizing it would be caught on camera. Number one, I do actually believe this. I I mean, yeah. I don't think that anybody would be that dumb to give the middle finger to the audience. Well, certainly not. But again, it's still stupid. I hope that this person did not lose their job. Maybe, you know, got suspended for a yeah. day or two or something like that to say, hey, think about this. Don't do it again. But I, I think that that actually makes a lot of sense that if you're with your producer and you're you're maybe goofing around a little bit and you, you do something stupid but just <laughs> be aware be aware is exactly right so again <laughs> and that's what i'm gonna say to you right now make sure that you always assume when you're in that front of that microphone that it's live we don't want you you know saying things you shouldn't be saying uh -huh. and there have been i mean how many moments i mean that's 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 one story but i've over the years i've heard many stories whether on tv or on radio or whatever it may be where people just assume they're not on <laughs> and they are on i've I seen mean, a lot of those uh, news bloopers on youtube yes and, yes yeah, that some of them are pretty funny. <laughs> Some of them are pretty serious. One of the one of the funniest ones was back in the day when Casey Kasem did American Top Forty, hmm. and he records that show every week. He recorded that show every week, and uh, he was having trouble with a long distance dedication, and and the guy that was producing him apparently was a little mad at Casey because he kept the recordings of him basically flying off the handle and, oh, no. and it caused a little embarrassment but but again I mean it's we're all human we're all human so yeah. uh, hopefully it's not a case where that uh, news person yeah, exactly okay. right so interesting I thought a few interesting stories to try to you know get us off to a good start I'm going to turn in a different direction coming up next I'm going to kind of hit back a little bit again I'd like from one time to time to kind of play Point counterpoint with uh, Chris Conley over at WSAU, and I disagree with one of his uh, opinion pieces this week. We'll talk about that coming up here on WXCO. Saturday night, the Wausau West hockey team looks for a 17th consecutive Marathon Cup championship. The Warriors take on Mozania. Hear all the exciting action on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30, online at bullfallsradio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Coverage begins with the pregame show at 7.20 and the opening face-off at 7.30. Wausau West Hockey on Bull Falls Radio is brought to you by the Cloverville Credit Union, Red Robin Restaurant, Sun Printing, Graphic Packaging International, the Wausau West Athletic Department, Menke Automotive, Shine Chiropractic, Picks and Pieces, and the Wausau West Hockey Booster Club. It's Wausau West taking on Mozanine in the Marathon Cup Championship game. Saturday night, starting with the pregame show at 720 on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230, bullfallsradio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you
Chad Holmes Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Online at bullfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO, and on the Civic Media app. Hey, I haven't done this in, in a little while. It's time to rebut Chris Conley in one of his commentaries. And the WSAU Morning Show co-host likes to be out there in terms of his commentary from the far right. And earlier this week and during the course of the week, I've talked about uh, Tom Killian, member of Boston City Council, not running for re-election, saying that, uh, you know, it's it's not a great thing. And obviously, you know, you have a choice in terms of running for office or not, but he's been, I think, a, a very important voice. Somebody, as I've said, is not afraid to rattle the cage. And apparently one cage that has been rattled is Chris Conley's because Chris Conley's doing a little victory jig concerning Tom Killian and not running for the uh, re-election coming up in the spring as uh, Conley had a uh, commentary that was put out yesterday and complains again Chris Conley doesn't think we should spend anything on environmental issues about keeping our environment clean and obviously Tom Killian and I think myself and many others disagree that we should be spending money to try to keep our earth and our land and our communities somehow clean from polluters and Conley says that uh, as a member of Citizens for a Clean Wausau, Killian is an unapologetic environmentalist. Well, I think you know, that's a positive for most people, not Chris Conley. Conley says, how much money should Wasa spend on environmental challenges? Whatever it takes, unlimited amounts. And again, it's a fallacy. It's a falsity. I mean, that, it, that's, that's, it's garbage. Because Chris Conley doesn't want, and again, I shouldn't say this. I, I shouldn't fall into the same trap that Mr. Conley does. I will say that he wants to spend very little, if anything. But the idea that whatever it takes, unlimited amounts. Well, Tom Killian wants to spend a lot more money than Chris Conley does. I'll say that much because he believes that a clean environment is an important thing. And then Conley says, that approach Again, the fallacy approach that he put out there. That approach is ridiculously expensive and void of common sense. What I think is void of common sense is thinking that you can ignore environmental challenges and somehow they're just going to go away because that is the Conley method. And he says, here are two examples, Riverside Park and PFAS chemicals in our water. Again, I have never seen somebody that is so pro-PFAS than Chris Conley seems to be. Conley says there's contaminated soil under Riverside Park. The company that put it there is long out of business. What should be done about it? Conley says nothing. That is a quote. Nothing should be done about it. The contamination is six inches below the surface, Conley says. He says it's likely harmless. Uh, Chris Conley likes to roll the dice. <laughs> snake eyes, Chris. Snake eyes. <sighs> Conley says no. I would not recommend building a home and living on top of contaminated soil. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> That's the kind of advice I come to you for every morning. Um, but he says, but it's a park. Most people visit for a short time and then leave. Their chances of being exposed are zero, according to Conley, environmental expert Chris Conley. <laughs> Yet after two years of consultants and studies, the city will spend north of $100,000 to dig up the soil and truck it away. He says that makes no sense. Of course, a guy that thinks we should do nothing about the environment thinks spending any money makes no sense. And then he goes on to his favorite uh, stalking horse, PFAS, the forever chemicals in our water. And uh, Wasa, he says, is spending breathtaking amount of money to filter its water down to zero. He thinks that we should have gone to a different way of going about it that was less expensive, something less permanent. He says the city never even considered the cost difference where we would be in compliance, but not at zero. He thinks just barely getting under the level of compliance would have been the best way to go. And then he says, and again, <laughs> he puts out words that sort of go up against what what he's been promoting for years now. He goes, no, I don't want people to be exposed to toxic soil or to drink unsafe water. But he doesn't want to do anything about it. So, I, again, your actions are what speak louder than your empty words, Chris. 
He says, and again, he wants to be a common sense environmentalist. He says, but if we don't apply a common sense approach to environmental costs, we won't have enough money for anything. Well, we certainly won't have enough money for the tax cuts that he and his buddies on the far right really, really enjoy. And then he says, closes it out with classic Conley. And that's why the city's checkbook needs to be closed to people like Tom Killian. Well, I'm glad. Yes, there's one person happy, Chris Conley. Again, this guy is just so far off when it comes to these issues. You cannot ignore environmental issues. You cannot ignore chemicals in our drinking water and just hope they go away. There are issues involved with cost. Absolutely. But we need people like Tom Killian and Citizens for a Clean Wasa to be able to push to get as much done as possible. Well, again, it's always fun to give a different point of view when it comes to Mr. Conley and his commentaries. The time is 928. We will have a news update coming up. We will then come back and have hear my discussion with uh, Wasa East uh, Jr., uh, Jesse Napgesic, again, uh, leading scorer for the Wasa East Bo- uh, Boys basketball team. We'll talk to Jesse Napgesic uh, coming up next. I'm Chad Holmes, the Chad Holmes Show, Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Chad Home Show on Pole Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. PoleFallsRadio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. On Wednesday, I had a chance to talk to uh, Jesse Napgesic from Wasa East. Boy, the Wasa East Lumberjack Boys basketball team, 5-0 and on the young season. Off to a fantastic start. One of the spark plugs has been Jesse Napgesic. And here's the uh, conversation I had with the young man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, and I tell you, it's, it's got to be nice to talk about it because you're 5-0 and on the season. I think in terms of uh, the early season, uh, the two games that kind of jump out, uh, New London going on the road winning there and then going up north to Rhinelander. And Rhinelander's never easy. I guess we'll start right there. Going up there, winning by 19 points, jumping out to, I think, about a 20-point lead at halftime. Uh, what was working last night for your team? Yeah, I mean, we just started off really strong. It was a hot start, and we kind of just kept the lead throughout the whole thing. It's always a great... um great atmosphere to play in and Ryan mm-hmm. Lander and um yeah it was a good game looking at the season so far five games five wins uh you got a lot of experienced players back because uh, your group for the most part was together for the last year and and, and it's been growing together uh, do you feel as though and I said it before we went on the air yeah you, know, you got the bru- uh, the bruises to prove it you had to go through some probably tougher times to get to this point what did you find out during the maybe the tougher times that you're using to your advantage so far this season. What has your team maybe learned that's allowing maybe where a game that could be a close loss is turning into a a Wasa East victory? Yeah, I think we really learned how to play with each other through those hard times. You know, we struggled a lot um, like last year and a couple of years back, but we've learned to play with each other and get through those hard times. And um, first five games, we've started off pretty well. Looking at your game, uh, in your process, where are you better right now than maybe when you first started your varsity career after the games and the minutes and the reps you put in? What are the areas you feel like you made the biggest strides up to this point? And obviously, as a, a junior or just five games into the season, you still have a lot of room to grow. But wh- where have you gotten better maybe in the last year plus? Yeah, I think I've become a lot more aggressive, you know, attacking the attacking the rim and passing it out and opening um. Driving lanes for your teammates and open shots for your teammates really helps you out, too. 
looking at the squad, uh, something I've noticed, uh, you know, in terms of looking at results and uh, what your team has been able to do is that while you're getting, you know, a pretty good chunk every night, uh, I think averaging maybe a little more than 20 points per game up to this point, it feels like there's always three and four Lumberjacks in double figures. And that's one of the good things when you're putting up 80 plus points in the game that there's a lot of points being put up and you can spread it out pretty mm-hmm. nicely. It does look like a group that has a number of different options. Before we talk about maybe your teammates, I imagine as somebody that does like to put it in the hole, that having others that are capable may makes your job a whole lot easier. Oh, yeah, for sure. We have a lot of great scorers on our team, and being able to pass the ball around and, you know, swing into the corner and knows that someone can knock down the shot, it's just it's great. Passing the ball around, everyone can score. <laughs> Let's talk about some of your other teammates. Who are the other guys that you look at as leaders, both in terms of what they do on the court and maybe even in the locker room, in the hallway, and, and just leaders that are, are taking this team in the right direction? Yeah, when I think leaders, I think of our two guards, Isaac and Jaden. They really, um, you know, hold each other accountable, hold everyone accountable, and they're very vocal on the court mm-hmm. and in the locker room, you know, getting everyone hype and make sure everyone has the right mindset before the games. Isaac Raswadowski and Jaden Garrett. Just yep. for people out there who are, aren't following as tightly uh, uh, Wasa East basketball, but I'm sure the winds keep coming, they'll be watching a lot much, much closer. That's interesting. So, what for the guards to be the leaders. I, I think that's always a good thing for a basketball team because obviously, in a sense, they start to play much like a quarterback on the football field. Th- does that help by having your guards to be guys you can kind of lean on? Because when things are getting tough, you put the ball in the hand of the guards, and it, it probably just calms things down, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. But before we talk a little bit more about the basketball aspect, I got to ask you because uh, part of this is, you know, we generally talk about high school sports, and you were part of the East football team this year, and you were I know a receiver had double digit catches this season in the conference and the thing about east football this year is beyond the record beyond just the the two wins which were outstanding is just getting east back on the field for varsity football what has that process been like i mean how difficult was it to keep working at the football aspect and obviously you know being a multi-sport athlete it's a little different but going through the tough times where you didn't have that I would say carrot on a Friday night to play a varsity football game. You have to wait multiple years to do it. How did that, I would call it adversity, help you maybe as an individual grow, even beyond what you accomplished on the football field, accomplished here on the basketball court, but going through some adversity? I I imagine that was not easy, but in the end, it's probably taught you a few lessons. Yeah, I think a lot of it's about perseverance. I mean, Last year and even the year before, you know, we were only had a JV team or eight man or whatever it was, and you got to just see past it. And I think it was a great group of guys who just stuck with it and stuck with our coaches, and it was really like a brotherhood. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we got into our varsity season this year. It was great. I want to ask you about that first game because, again, actually the the first week of the season before that game, uh, I had Coach Kramer on the program and uh, was talking to him. And then going into it, you know, from the outside, you, you kind of wonder, hey, what's going to happen with the East? Or, because they've had issues even, you know, when they were starting seasons, having issues getting them done. But he sat across from me and was very confident. I mean, he it sounded like he knew you guys were going to go up north and win that football game in week one. Uh, was that maybe the attitude – Especially in the summer, when you when you're going through you know the off season workouts and then seven on seven or whatever it may be during the summer, and then practice starting, was there always that sense of confidence that it was going to be different? That this is a different Wasa East football program? Yeah, for sure. I think every year we go in having a different mindset, like this is going to be our year, and having that confidence is a great way to you know go into the season. And picking up that first win in Lakeland really helped us. What was the bus ride like home? Because oh. I imagine that must have been incredibly fun. Yeah, it was great. It was it was really great having that first varsity win under our belt. That was that was great. Again, we are talking to Jesse Napgesic from Wasa East High School Junior on the five and zero Wasa East uh, boys basketball team. Also was a member of the Wasa East football team. I think had eleven catches, if I'm not mistaken, in conference play this year. Uh, are you involved in any other sports? Or is it just the two? I'm doing track this year. Oh. Yeah. What do you do in track? Um, it's, it's going to be my first year. I think I'm going to do high jump. If you have success in one sport and obviously, you know, going from football to basketball this year, having good feelings about your football season, having positive, uh, moments, does that momentum help you go into a, a completely different sport? Yeah, I think it does. I think some of it translates and I'm going into the track season really just trying to get, 
trying to get faster, trying sure. to get stronger and better. And I mean, I haven't really done track for, so I'm kind of using it to focus on my two other favorite sports. So, sure. Yeah. Between uh, football and basketball, what's your favorite? My favorite would have to be basketball season I'm in right now. Why basketball? What do you, What is it about the game that – because it's more than just going out there and playing, uh, playing in the games. You have to work at it in order to develop your skills. And uh, in order to work hard, you have to have that love for the game. What is it about basketball that uh, keeps you working hour after hour and, and trying to take those steps forward? Yeah, I really – I've had a basketball in my hands ever since I can remember. I just – I love the game. I love the feeling. I love the team. You know, the team aspect is great. Uh, getting a win and playing with your teams is just – it's a great feeling. Before we ask you about some of the, I think, the Wisconsin Valley Conference and, and uh, going into that on Friday, let's uh, step away uh, from, from sports for a moment. When you have a chance to get away, to when you uh, want to you know, just uh, relax a little bit, uh, what do you like to do? Well, <laughs> um, normally I just, ooh, like Sundays, uh, wake up, watch football. <laughs> Sunday is normally my, my rest day. Right. So, you know, watch football and hang out with my dogs. I really, mm-hmm. I have two dogs and I love them. They're what great. are, what kind of dogs do you got? Oh, uh, Aussie Doodle and, uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> they're, they're both very similar. They're both doodles. One's tan and one's white. They're, they're, they're great. What's their names? Lewis and Rosie. Very good. Um, you have a favorite class? I do. I like uh, pre-calc IB. I'm I'm kind of a math guy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Have you got, again, you have so much time left in high school yet, uh, but it does go by quickly. Uh, have you thought about the future to, at this point? And again, I'm not holding you to anything because, you know, even though it's going to be you know out there. But have you have any maybe dreams in terms of maybe what you like to study at the next level and maybe even career after that? Yeah, I've thought about it a little bit. I mean, I'm thinking of math for like a career exploration because that's like kind of my uh my main skills skill set mm-hmm. and i was looking into like being an actuary or going into finance but i really just want to play a uh, college basketball see if i can get to the next level and yeah see where that takes me on that point um knowing that you have that goal that you want to play at the next level what are the areas right now that you're thinking, okay, over these next two years, I've got to get better here, or these are the things I have to do to prepare to allow myself to have that opportunity. Do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I think I need to get stronger. I mean, there's obviously a lot I can work on. There's a lot I can improve in, mm-hmm. but I think my main thing I need to do is get stronger. Again, Jesse Napgesic from Wasa East, our student athlete guest uh, this week here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Uh, you do start off the Wisconsin Valley Conference on Friday night, uh, D.C. Everest. It's always uh, those fun games when you play either, I imagine, West or Everest. Um, when you look at the conference itself, have you kind of looked at uh, what the teams are doing in the non-conference? Have you taken a peek? Have you had any thoughts on maybe some of the teams you expect to be among the best in the conference outside, of course, of Wasa East? Yeah, um, I really just look for the game ahead of, ahead of us, but... Yeah, I have watched film on uh, a little bit of the teams like Everest and Spash, but we're really just focused on Everest on Friday. Well, what jumps out about D.C. Everest? They've had some pretty good years uh, recently. Uh, obviously, uh, when you lose uh, a Division One basketball talent like they did, there's going to be some changes, but I know they've got a great score in Cohen Preby, and, uh, and again, I think it's a team that's gonna, always going to be there. Uh, what have you talked about within the team and Coach Garrett and everybody else uh, about what to expect from D.C. Everest? Yeah, I mean, they're a great team. They're well-coached and hard workers. I play AAU with some of the Mm -hmm. kids on the team, and it's going to be a tough matchup, but I'm excited and looking forward to it. What are those games like when you face maybe Everest or or Wausau West, the the city teams, basically? Uh, What are those games like when you know your opponents probably as intimately as anybody? You know, you've probably seen them play, you know, played, you know, pickup games what are those games like yeah it's 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 a great i love competing and when you know them personally it just makes the competition even better and yeah it's it's just great it's really fun to play against them do you have a favorite opponent whether football or basketball yeah wasa west definitely (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i beyond just being the inner city rival is there anything else about it is it maybe an energy in the in the venues is it knowing that you know the, the that the that maybe the student body is more into it than maybe even a normal game it, well, what else adds to the the whole ambiance of, of a east west game yeah i mean obviously there are there are rivalry across the river but i think the atmosphere is really what gets me i mean i just i love playing in a big atmosphere and when it's loud and 
yeah, it's just it's great. When you look at this season, and obviously, uh, again, I think that uh, until you do it, people almost aren't expecting it. And, uh, and it's been a process for East now to take steps forward the last few years. When you look at this year now, how do you look at the goals? Do you have goals for this season, both individually and team-wise? Or is it, as you said, maybe one day and one game at a time? Yeah, we do. We have big goals. We want to um, we want to finish the top half of the conference, and we want to see where that takes us. And yeah, that's that's about it. Do you dare to have big dreams? Sometimes I ask, uh, uh, or some of our guests, you know, because obviously playing say on the Cole Center court, you know, something like that. Do you allow yourself? to visualize something like that uh, even when it's obviously you know, such a long way to go yeah for sure I mean I, I think about that all the time I think I, I really do have big goals but some of them I don't like to disclose just because you know but <laughs> man now that opens the box I want to find out <laughs> some of these big goals and I guess finally what's the biggest thing you've learned maybe you know just generally uh no, from sports because often I'll ask about you know especially with a senior but you're you're not at this level yet so I'm gonna a- ask the question in a in a different way what have you learned so far during it can be even you know non varsity in the run up through middle school and, and high school before you got to this point what has sports taught you that maybe you wouldn't have gotten by not being involved in in the different sports you've been involved with. Yeah, I think sports just in general really taught me how to work hard. If you have, you know, a goal in mind, you got to re- work as hard as you can just to get there. Fantastic. Again, it's been a, a, a terrific start uh, for you and your teammates this season, 5-0, and all, now into the WVC. And, again, a lot of great matchups coming up starting on Friday uh, with the D.C. Ever Seven Greens. Jesse, again, uh, really appreciate you spending a few minutes with us and, and coming on by, and best of luck uh, throughout the rest of the season. Thank you for having me. Again, Jesse Napgazek of the Wasa East Lumberjacks. The time is almost 949. We'll come back. More to come here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. You've got a ribbon of rainbows, the sun in your Chad Holmes back with you here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Online at bullfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXEO. Yep, heading towards the weekend. Sun continues to peek through some uh, cloud cover. I'd say mostly cloudy skies, but a little bit of sunshine out there right now. Temperature of 40 degrees. We expect uh, temperatures to get into the mid to upper 40s before all is said and done. There is a, a slight chance of a little rain or snow mix tonight into early Saturday. And then uh, starting Sunday, some sunny skies Sunday, chillier, 29. Uh, Then sunny again on Monday, 32, sunny and 29. So again, if you're looking for that snow to get out there and enjoy, you're going to have to wait a little while. It does not look like in the next week or so we are expecting any significant snow. Again, we will keep you up to speed on the weather each and every day, 24-7, here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. It is the eighth day of December of 2023. Yep, we are heading down the stretch with 23 days to go before we get to 2024. And uh, time to take our daily history lesson. Some of the famous events, some of the favorite uh, folks who are celebrating birthdays here today. We'll start with the uh, famous events. 1792, the first formal cremation of a human body in America took place near Charleston, South Carolina. 
Henry Lawrence, colonial statesman and signer of the Treaty of Paris ending the Revolutionary War, in his will provided, I do solemnly enjoin it on my son as an indispensable duty that as soon as he can conveniently can after my decease to use my body to be wrapped in 12 yards of tow cloth and burned until it is entirely consumed and then collecting my bones, deposit them wherever he may think proper. So the first cremation on this date in 1792. Tragic day, 1980. December the 8th of 1980, most people found this out while watching Monday Night Football. Howard Cosell announced that John Lennon was murdered by Mark David Chapman in New York City. On this date in 1993, the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, was signed into law by U.S. President Bill Clinton. On this date in 2010, with the second launch of the SpaceX Dragon, SpaceX became the first privately held company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft. On this date in 2011, Japan's government apologized to Canada for the treatment of its POWs during World War II. On this date in 2020, the UK began vaccinating for COVID-19 using the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. And on this date in 2022, South Korea's parliament passed a law that citizens will soon turn a year or two younger than they've been all their lives. The country's traditional method of determining age, which specifies that a child is one year old on the date of birth and becomes a year older each January the 1st, was to be abolished. Some famous people celebrating their birthdays. Kim Basinger, hard to believe, but Kim Basinger. Remember her as uh, Vicki Vale in Batman, among other movies. Kim Basinger turning 70 years old today. Terry Hatcher, known uh, as Lois Lane back in the uh, series Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, also uh, was uh, involved in a famous episode of Seinfeld. Terry Hatcher is 59 years old. Of course, she was one of the Desperate Housewives. Race car driver Kevin Harvick, NASCAR champion, just uh, retired. His last race was last month. Kevin Harvick is 48 years old today. Dominic Monaghan of Lost, Lord of the Rings, is 47 years old. Nicki Minaj is turning 41 years old today. And Anna Sophia Robb of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Soul Surfer is 30 years old today. And if you out there celebrating a birthday, Happy birthday to you from all of us at Bull Falls Radio, 98, 9, and 1230. Happy birthday. Some special events being acknowledged today. It is Brownie Day. That's always a good one. Oh, yeah. It is Salesperson Day. It is Crossword Solvers Day. So if you're a big crossword puzzle person, this one's for you. Crosswords are fun. It is Lost and Found Day. Christmas Tree Day. So I guess if you haven't already put up that Christmas tree, make sure you do it today on Christmas Tree Day. (laughs) <laughs> this one I, <laughs> I'm not sure about. It's Lard Day. Lard Day today. No, thank you. <laughs> and it's Pretend to be a Time Traveler Day. <laughs> so I, I do that every day. There you go. <laughs> so those are some some uh, special events being acknowledged today. Well, it is time now for our number for the day. This one is 54000 and it's the cost in dollars of something. 54,000. And actually, it's not a fun one to me. <laughs> it says, oh, that's a lot of money as we get older. It um, involves people when they get older. And I'm getting closer and closer to this. Oh, boy. That could, that's a little <laughs> tough. Um, $54,000. Yeah. When we get older. Uh, three seconds or else we can't. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. It is the cost. Again, the cost in dollars per year to live in a typical assisted living facility in the U.S. Really? Uh, so I can't afford that. I'm about to keep working. $54,000. That's unbelievable. Cost in dollars per year to live in a typical assisted living facility in the U.S. Well, I don't know. I mean, when you really think about it, because you have cost involved of nurses and everything that goes into it. And, True. you know, if you just take like rent. You know, right now my my rent per year is is pushing closer to uh, twelve thousand dollars a year. So I mean, oh. that's without uh, all that other stuff. So, uh, so that is our number for the day. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, don't forget, all day long, keep it right here. Uh, great programming on Bull Falls Radio and the Civic Media Radio Network from 10 until noon. It is Ask Goes Wisconsin from noon until 2, the Todd Alba Show. From 2 until 4, Matt Flynn Direct, the Devil's Advocates with Dom and Crudy from 4 until 6, the Maggie Dawn Show at 6 o'clock as well. And don't forget, tonight we have high school boys basketball, uh, the Wausau West Warriors taking on the Merrill Blue Jays, 7 o'clock pregame. And then tomorrow, Wausau West Basketball taking on Little Shoot, 250 for the pregame, and the Marathon Cup Championship game, Wausau West against Mozanie tomorrow night at 7.30. Ian, have a good weekend. You will, too. Have a good weekend, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow for yep. Sully's College Football page. And everyone, have a great weekend. And make sure you tune in Monday morning, 8 o'clock. We'll have Tony Gonzalez joining us Monday morning here on the Chad Holmes Show, Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30.